and welcome to another Bionicle video! Today we're going to be dipping back into the magical world of plastic dye. If you are here on the channel a few videos back, you might recall me experimenting with this stuff for my Shadow Toa Nuva. If you've seen that video, you'll know that the Nuva leg pieces don't exist in black, so I ended up using dye to fill in the gaps, so to speak. Overall, the results were pretty good. There was a slight difference in colour, but the main advantage of using dye for cases like that is that the dye actually changes the colour of the plastic, unlike paint, which is just a coating. And that's pretty important as far as bionicle pieces are concerned, because you want something that's not going to scrape off in friction joints, like paint would. Anyway, I've said for a while that I want to try experimenting with a few more colours, and I finally got around to making good on my promise. So without further ado, purple time! Okay, quick overview before we get started. Uh, we've got a bunch of white pieces here, because you can make light pieces darker with dye, but not the other way around. So naturally, white is the best colour to start with. And with that in mind, we've got some white toa bits, a couple of torsos and some feet. And we've got some Rakshi bits. Honestly, I've not got high hopes for these. They're the same soft plastic as Nuva weapons, and from past experience, that kind of plastic just doesn't take dye. At all. Uh, still, they're white instead of silver, so something might happen. Who knows? Worth a shot. Then we've got some generic connectors. And a mask. The plan is to experiment with this one, and if it turns out well, I'll try some others. And then we've got some Borok bits. Uh, the body and feet should be fine, but the weapons are that same soft plastic again, so mm, not sure what's going to happen with those. Probably not much, but I'm curious to see how the canopy turns out at least. And speaking of canopies, we've got a Borok Cal canopy. And finally, a couple of spare silver masks that I had laying around. So I'll get all these washed to make sure there's no residue that might affect the dye, and then we'll get stuck in. Right, same setup as before. Saucepan of boiling water with a glass jug that will hold the dye, and hopefully protect the pieces from warping. In goes the dye powder, which comes in a convenient dissolvable sachet. In goes a fork to mix the solution into a nice even consistency. In go the pieces. And then we stir until ready. Probably could have used a bigger jug for this, but the dye is good for several batches at least, so we get a few attempts. And we're done! The pieces are dyed. And so are my fingers, which I've scrubbed and scrubbed, but they're still a bit purple. Um, not a fun kind of purple either, more of a sickly diseased fingernails purple. Ugh. And as for the t-shirt I was wearing, uh, well, <laughs> not going to be wearing that again. Anyway, enough about the mess I made, you want results. But before we take a proper look at the finished pieces, I've just got to take a minute to point out how crazy accurate the shade of purple is compared to the one used for official LEGO pieces. It's like the dye designers were deliberately trying to copy LEGO here. No way it's just a coincidence. So if you want some nice purple LEGO bits, this is the brand to use. Although that said, there's also a lot of trial and error involved. The shade you end up with depends on a whole load of factors, from time submerged, water temperature, plastic quality, dye ratios, and more. And if you don't take them all into account, you can end up with some less than ideal results. My first few attempts came out really patchy, and after a bit of investigation, I realised I'd been overloading the amount of dye in the mixture. Turns out if you put too much dye in, it doesn't fully dissolve and then just kind of clumps up on the plastic. And these feet came out too quickly, so they're a much lighter colour. But um, yeah, I kind of like them. And hey, that's what experimenting is for. Luckily I planned ahead and had enough spares to compensate. Um, well, mostly. <laughs> anyway, negatives out of the way, on with the good stuff. So we've got some purple Borok bits, including the body halves, and a few pairs of feet in different shades of purple. The hand weapons were a bit of failure, as expected, but we'll look at them shortly. And as for the canopy, um, well, take a look. Possibly the most amazing Borok canopy I've ever seen. <laughs> really pleased with how this turned out. Um, sure, the dome bit would be completely clear on an official release, but the trans purple looks so nice I'm not going to complain. Um, yeah, stay tuned and we'll get him built in a minute. Then we've got the Borok Cal Canopy. Uh, the plastic turned this really nice shade of metallic purple, but the printed pattern didn't change at all. Um, weird. Not sure about the blue with purple, um, probably should have used a different colour here, but oh well. Then we've got some toe parts. Um, I had a few goes at the torso, but still didn't manage to get it quite right, which is annoying, but the feet are perfect. And the shield is perfect as well. Really nice colour match on both sides. And then we've got Kopaka's Mask. Um, I had three goes at dyeing this with different durations. The first one is pretty much spot on, but I let the other stew for a bit longer for darker shades. I kind of like the middle one as well. Next up, a purple Miru. Um, I was pretty pleased with how the Akakus turned out, and I had a spare white Miru from a previous unboxing, so I thought I'd give this one a try. There's a background character from Onukoro called Damek, who pilots a boxer during the Borok invasion, and he has a purple Miru, so voila, Damek is born. Then after dropping the Miru in, I snuck in some spare trans blue pieces as well. Um, Gally's Cow Cow and a Ruru from the Nui Rama set. Now on first glance they don't look much different, but if I bring in a regular Cow Cow, you can see they're quite a bit darker. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do with these, but yeah, they look pretty nice. Next up, a Kanoe Rao. Um, this started off as Nokama's standard light blue one, and uh, as you can see the colour plastic has really affected the final result. Um, it's a deeper shade of purple than the other pieces, and um, yeah, I quite like it. 
Now we've got the silver masks. Um, well, purple now. Um, yeah, these came out really nice. A uh, really nice shade of metallic purple. In fact, I was so pleased with how these turned out that I went and grabbed a cow cow and a how as well. Um, I couldn't find a Pakari or a Kakama in time to make it a full set, but maybe next time. Although thinking about it, I'm not even sure I've got a spare silver Pakari, so <laughs> might have been wasting my time looking. Oh well. Um, anyway, I really like the how. Look how shiny it is. Almost like chrome. And then we're on to some of the less exciting bits, or uh, learning opportunities, if you will. First up, those Borok hands again. Um, yeah, I had my doubts, and uh, no change. Uh, the soft plastic just doesn't take dye in any colour. Um, disappointing, really. Uh, then we've got the Rakshi pieces. Uh, soft plastic again, and as you can see, pretty much the same result. Um, maybe very slightly more pink under the right light, but um, yeah, nothing noteworthy. And then this Toa torso. <laughs> Yeah, no idea what happened here. It went in the same time as other pieces that came out purple, but as you can see it's still very white. Um, apparently it's just immune to the dye. Very strange. And then we've got some limb pieces. Now, these started out as light grey, and as you can see there's not much change. A bit disappointing really. Um, I was hoping that the colour would be light enough to take the dye, but well, I guess not. And some dark grey pieces went in at the same time as well, and they came out even more underwhelming. Um, yeah, you can barely tell the difference. Anyway, that's the pieces done. Let's see what we can build. So, first up, a purple toa. Um, I started out with those purpley grey limbs, which you can see here, but I really didn't like the colour. It's not one that's in Lego's palette, and it really doesn't complement the main colour either. Instead it just comes off looking a bit, well, dirty. But then I remembered Energy Slicer, who is black and purple, so I rebuilt this guy with black limbs instead, and I really like it. Um, it's a bit annoying that the body doesn't quite match the rest of the purple bits, but I think it's good for a first attempt with this colour. And I've got some more dye on order, so hopefully I can match the body colour a bit better during round two. And maybe by then I'll have come up with a better idea for a weapon as well. Kopaka's normal sword is that soft plastic which refuses to dye, so I've given him a black sword for now until I'm feeling a bit more creative. Maybe some kind of electric weapon? I mean, if we're stealing Energy Slicer's colour, we might as well steal his thieve as well. Make this guy a toa of electricity. Hmm, <coughs> freaky. <coughs> And then the Borok. I'm much happier with this guy. Uh, the pieces all match, and the canopy is amazing. I even found some purple eye pieces in my parts box. Um, again, I'm not sure about the weapons, since those Borok hands are immune to die, but um, I'm open to suggestions. And it needs a name too, so if you want to help out, ideas down below. And here they are together. Purple Toa versus Purple Borok. Not bad for a first dip into purple dye. Uh, not perfect, of course, but I think I'm confident enough for the second attempt. Maybe even move on to some larger stuff next time too. Uh, purple Exo Toa, anyone? Anyway, let me know what you think, maybe drop us a like, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!